MAGA leaders uh, demanding that everybody come together. They want to do kumbaya now. Okay, that's that, that is the thing that you're hearing from some of Donald Trump's sur surrogates, that, that it's time to unite the country and that libs don't need to be mean to them anymore. Um, there are a couple of examples of this that I want to point to. Now that the elections over MAGA supporters are suddenly calling for unity after years of name calling and heated rhetoric, Vivek Ramaswamy has been making the rounds on political shows, pushing for people to respect and accept Donald Trump. Tim Miller from The Bulwark isn't buying it and has plenty to say about this shift. We're going to check out clips of Vivek and Tim going head to head on these points, and I'll be sharing my thoughts as we go along. Let's jump into it. Uh, and then I want to go over the flaws of uh, this particular notion that's being put forth. Let's watch Vivek Ramaswamy on uh, Sunday show, ABC's This Week with Jonathan Carl. Uh, just yesterday. In the aftermath, you spent some time uh, with the now president-elect Donald Trump. What's your sense? How is he approaching this transition? I think he cares about uniting the country. I think that is Donald Trump's number one focus. And I do think we have to get back to a place after this election, after that decisive victory, which I do think was a gift to the country, get back to a place where ordinary Americans who might have voted differently amongst their family members or their colleagues or their neighbors to be able to get together at the dinner table and say we're still Americans at the end of this. That's very much Donald Trump's headspace. He's also learned a lot from that first term, and I think he's going into the second term, even to take to new heights some of the things he wasn't able to accomplish in the first term, which I think is going to be a good thing. So there it is. There's something you noticed there. He said that uh, family members, neighbors, colleagues, they must respect each other at the dinner table, even if they voted differently last Tuesday. Uh, th and there's something that you notice there, which is a demand that people that did not vote for Donald Trump respect people that did. What, what is missing, though, is any effort to earn that respect. Right. It's a very one way sort of thing. It's a we can run a campaign that demonizes trans folks. The left wing gender insanity being pushed on our children is an act of child abuse. Demonizes Haitians. They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating. They're eating the pets of the people that live there. Demonizes migrants. One hundred percent of the jobs that were created went to migrants, not to people. If you enjoy this type of content, please hit the like button and subscribe. Two enemies. We have the outside enemy and then we have the enemy from within. And the enemy from within, in my opinion, is more dangerous. You know, we can insult you and use every cruel word that we can think of. We can call you garbage. We are going to take out the trash in Washington, D.C., and the trash's name is Kamala Harris. We can call you idiots and stupid and low IQ. Low IQ. She's a low IQ individual. And then when it's over, afterwards, you have to be like, hey, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for calling me garbage and the enemy of the people and making up lies about how I eat pets. I, I, I respect you so much. I just I'd love to have a meal with you right now. Tim Miller has a point here. The call for unity and respect from MAGA leaders seems a bit ironic, given how much divisive language they use during the campaign. After years of calling opponents names and pushing a us versus them narrative, it feels a bit one-sided to now ask everyone to come together and play nice, especially without any acknowledgement of the harsh tactics they used. Vivek's statement about Trump's focus on unity sounds good on the surface, but Tim's right to question whether it's genuine. It's one thing to call for unity, but it's another to actually work for it and show respect to people who disagree with you. Just asking for respect at the dinner table after a victory doesn't undo the months or even years of divisive rhetoric. This appeal for unity might be strategic, but without any real effort to bridge the divide, it risks coming off as insincere. People might see it as a way of saying, now that we've won, let's forget about everything we said to get here. True unity needs mutual respect, not just a request for forgiveness and cooperation once the game is over. 